Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code JOEY. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY. You'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set, and I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY, get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. The Trump campaign quickly slammed the notion of males competing against females as an uproar surrounds a Nigerian fighter caught in the middle of a gender eligibility controversy after their opponent, Italian boxer Angela Carini, withdrew from the match 46 seconds in due to the impact of the punch. Meanwhile, the White House and Vice President Kamala Harris, crickets, have not commented. New information on the attempted assassination of Donald Trump. A whistleblower told Republican Missouri Senator Josh Hawley that acting Secret Service Director Ronald Rowe Jr. personally directed cuts to the Counter Surveillance Division, known as CSD, which led to the threat assessment team failing to perform its typical duties prior to the Butler, Pennsylvania rally. Is it Governor Josh Shapiro? The Pennsylvania governor, one of the front runners to be Vice President Kamala Harris's running mate, has canceled three appearances at weekend fundraising events in the Hamptons, raising speculation that he may be the one the vice president announces on Tuesday. And Duke Energy Serves the Carolinas announced a rate decrease this week. I typically call them out when they ask for an increase, so I guess I have to give them credit for when they offer a decrease. Joining me on the guest line is Duke Communications Manager Ryan Mosier. Both the White House and Kamala Harris's campaign were silent when contacted for comment yesterday morning about whether they support biological males, intersex, or trans athletes competing against biological females at the Olympics. The Trump campaign, meanwhile, quickly slammed the notion as an uproar surrounds an Algerian fighter caught in the middle of a gender eligibility controversy uh, after their opponent, Italian boxer Angela Carini, withdrew from the match just 46 seconds in due to the impact of a hard-hitting punch. The uh, Trump campaign spokesperson told Fox News Digital, President Trump has been unequivocally clear that he will not stand for men competing in women's sports. An insane and unfair reality has been allowed to transpire because of radical left politicians like Kamala Harris. When he returns to the White House, President Trump will take immediate action to protect women and girls and overturn the Harris-Biden administration's radical rewrite of Title IX. Here's what the fuss is all about. Iman Kiloff, an Algerian Olympian, was disqualified in 2023 in the World Boxing Championships after the International Boxing Association determined that Mr. Kiloff failed gender tests. According to Reuters, Kiloff, has, uh, who has female listed on her passport, was found to have elevated levels of testosterone. Here's a, a Fox News report. Well, this was a moment of history. It happened earlier today in France, and a major controversy, too, has now erupted out of Paris. An Algerian boxer shown in the red uniform who failed a gender eligibility test last year has now won an opening fight after only 46 seconds. Her opponent breaking down in tears, calling it, quote, unjust. Uh, Greg Palcott picks it up from London with more on what happened in the ring. Greg. Hey, Bill. Yeah, big controversy indeed at the Olympics. A boxer deemed a biological male beating an Italian female opponent with the Italian crying out, I couldn't take it anymore. Despite failing that gender test by the International Boxing Association and being banned from an international tournament last year, Algerian 25-year-old Iman Khalif was okayed by Olympic authorities to compete. And apparently today it was a very one-sided fight with Italian Angela Carini, also 25. After just 46 seconds and several sharp punches to the head, including the nose by Khalif, 
Carini abandoned the fight, threw her helmet to the floor, stormed off the boxing ring, and in fact went on to say that she had never felt such strong blows in a contest before. Now, Algerian Khalif has competed for several years in other international tournaments, including the Olympics, but was banned last year due to, according to officials, elevated levels of testosterone. Algerian sports officials have called the charges against Khalif baseless, but others have raised concerns about the health of opposing athletes when, according to one, a man fights a woman. And what should be a simple decision, and is right, a man should not be fighting a woman. But boy, how complicated the world has become with these leftist groups, with these uh, leftist people convincing these young men that all they have to do is identify as a woman and they can compete in female sports. IBA president Umar Krevlaw explained the decision at the time, according to Russia's task news agency, saying that based on DNA tests, quote, we identified a number of athletes who tried to trick their colleagues into posing as women. According to the results of the test, it was proved that they have XY chromosomes. Such athletes were excluded from competition, he explained. Uh, Kiloff was authorized to compete by the International Olympic Committee, and the Algerian Olympic Committee addressed the criticisms before yesterday's event. COA strongly condemns the unethical targeting and maligning of our esteemed athlete, Iman Kiloff, with baseless propaganda from certain foreign media outlets, the organization said, this via Reuters. Such attacks on her personality and dignity are deeply unfair, especially as she prepares for the pinnacle of her career at the Olympics. The COA has taken all necessary measures to protect our champion. Now, Italian officials express concerns about Kilos eligibility. It is surprising that there are no certain strict uniform criteria at the international level, Italian sports minister Andrea Abadi said adding it was strange that there can be a suspicion and far more than a suspicion of an unfair and potentially dangerous contest for one of the contenders at the Olympics, an event that symbolizes sporting fairness. Well, they're, all, they're right. I mean, how did, how did this person, this obviously young man, get this far? Of course, I guess the, the simple answer to that is the International Olympic Committee is woke. And we saw that in the opening ceremonies over the weekend, did we not? By allowing uh, the, the, the horrible display, the, the mocking of Christianity. Now, I understand they claim that it wasn't about the, the, uh, the Last Supper. But if it wasn't about the Last Supper, boy, they made it look like it was, did they not? Nothing is fair about this. Uh, it's, it's really not fair to this young man either. He, he should have, a, uh, whenever this started, and evidently he has been competing as a she for a few years now. Someone should have stopped this long ago. They're not doing him any favors, and they certainly aren't doing young women who have worked their entire lives to, to reach the Olympics, and now that's, all, that's, that's, all, that's just been thrown away. The young lady in the ring last night, uh, with this young man, had no chance. Didn't have a fighting chance, pun intended. Biological males should not be allowed to compete in female sports. If there's any question, follow the science, as the Democrats always like to say. Follow the science. Why are they not following the science now? Why is suddenly the left, they don't want to accept the test by the international boxing. They don't want to accept the science that they presented, that this person has the chromosomes of a male. Uh, the Italian Prime Minister uh, Georgia Milani told the UK paper, The Telegraph, it was not even a contest. I think that athletes who have male genetic characteristics should not be admitted to women's competitions, and not because you want to discriminate against someone, but to protect the right of female athletes to be able to compete on equal terms. I I'm glad to hear that there's a politician who has a little bit of common sense. And how Kamala Harris and Joe Biden can't see this is just foreign to me. I understand that they want to protect the rights of people. We don't want to discriminate. But this is basic. You are hurting young women who 
worked their entire lives to get to this point in their sport. And you would think that Kamala Harris would be the first to be defending them. This is not the first controversy that has arisen since the, the Olympics, of course, began. And again, Olympic organizers faced backlash from the Christian community uh, and others worldwide regarding the opening ceremonies this past weekend after this skit featuring drag queens and a woman in a halo crown appeared to mock Leonardo da Vinci's painting of Jesus' Last Supper. Now, that, that's how Reuters put it, appeared to mock. There was no appearing at all. They were mocking the Christian community. If elected, you can, you're going to get more of this because Kamala Harris is expected to advance the Biden administration's effort to exp, expand Title IX, the civil rights law that prohibits sex-based discrimination in federally funded schools and educational institutions, now including protections against discri- discrimination based on gender identity and sexual orientation. LBGTQ activists champion the change as a necessary one to prevent transgender students from facing certain restrictions. Unfortunately, that rule took effect August the 1st. We're going to get more of this if Kamala Harris is elected in November. This is why we have to work hard. This is why we have to turn out. This is why we have to elect Donald Trump. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. Soon going to be four years ago that I started my journey with Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly, I might add, and I've been able to maintain that for almost four years now. It'll be four years coming up in July. If this is the year that you have decided that you're going to get healthy, that you're going to lose that weight, that visceral fat that's so uh, damaging around your your waist, then now's the time to start. Let me encourage you to make that call today. 864-252-4925. Set up your initial consultation with PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. Boy, am I glad that I met Dr. Ashley Lucas uh, four years ago and that she got me on the right path to getting healthy. You're going to be able to do things that you may have thought you'd never be able to do again. Uh, play with the kids, the grandkids. Be able to to hike and, and walk and uh, maybe play a full 18-round uh, hole of golf and be able to do it and not get so winded. Because when you take that excess weight off, you're just going to feel better. You're going to be able to focus. You're going to be able to sleep better. Your overall health is just going to be improved. 864-252-4925. Call, set up your initial consultation. Find them online at myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. We sometimes take for granted that when we turn an electrical switch on or we plug our cell phones into the wall to recharge, that electricity is available. And for most, me included, I just pay the bill every month. I may complain a little uh, and move on. This week, we learned that there may be some relief on the way for Duke Energy customers as the company announced plans to drop rates by close to 10% just after Duke announced that they'd be raising rates for customers. Are you confused too? Uh, on our guest line today, Duke Energy Communications Manager, Ryan Mosier. Welcome, Ryan. How are you? Hey, Joe. It's good to be with you. Okay, so help me out here. So uh, at one point, we thought that uh, you were raising rates. Now we're hearing that they're going to be decreased. Make this simple for a loud mouth on the radio. Yeah, it's it, uh, you know, it can certainly be confusing, and, and we understood that as we move through the year. Some things, uh, timing is everything. And so let me, I'll start with the beginning of the year. So the beginning of the year, the company Duke Energy Carolinas, which is the utility that serves the upstate uh, primarily, um, applied with the Public Service Commission of South Carolina and proposed a, a rate increase. And so this is what we call the base rate uh, component of a, of a customer's bill. This takes into account things, major expenses like building and upgrading new power plants, uh, new poles and wires, transmission lines, um, improving customer systems, those types of things, large capital projects that are spent, uh, that we spend money on over many years. And then when the time is right, we, we're been holding the cat, these debts on our books for a period of time. We, we basically show our receipts to the Public Service Commission and say, Here's what we've spent. We believe we've done it in a prudent manner on behalf of our customers, and we ask for a change in base rates. And so that's the process that took place over basically the first half 
of 2024 here in the upstate. As you mentioned, it was a very public process. There were public hearings where customers could come in and, um, across the upstate where they could voice their opinion on the matter. And then ultimately, the Public Service Commission in Columbia uh, a number of weeks ago had a multi-day hearing on it where they took testimony, examined the facts and, and the, of the case, and eventually made um, made a decision to approve what was an act- and actually a settlement between a lot of the parties, an agreement on certain aspects of the case. And so those rates that were approved by the commission actually begin or began to take effect on August 1st this yeah. week. Yeah. Now, the other part of the equation is what we call the fuel charger, fuel rates. Fuel rates are annually, uh, are looked at annually by the Public Service Commission. And basically, it's a pass through of the cost that the company spends to purchase the fuel that powers power plants. And so we are always constantly in the market looking for the, the best deals we can get on things like natural gas and the, and the items we use and nuclear and all of the associated costs and expenses with that that actually create the power, that, that, that have the power plants putting uh, electrons into your home and businesses every day. That's an annual process that happens every year. Some years, uh, because of the volatility in the commodity markets, prices uh, go up, prices go down but we pass that completely through to the customer. So the customer benefits from our practices of managing our contracts with the, the, the suppliers. Uh, this year, uh, natural gas finally uh, became a little less volatile in the commodity market. And so we were able to pass on those savings uh, to customers. And yeah. so if the regulator approves, and we still have a regulatory process to go through, but that's what we proposed this week is that decrease in the fuel charge and if the PSC approves it, uh, we would expect those new rates to go into effect in November of yep. this year. With us today, Ryan Mosier, communications manager with Duke Energy. So, Ryan, is there any scenario that they would not approve a rate decrease? We don't believe so. Uh, but again, rate making is completely in the, uh, the purview of the Public Service Commission of South Carolina. Uh, we believe that we have presented them the information that shows that we've been prudent in our, our and diligent in our expenses. So we would expect that the Public Service Commission would uh, approve uh, something in the in the vicinity of, of what we've submitted to them this week. Yep. Well, if, if you think that it's going in the wrong direction, let me know. I think we could probably generate a few phone calls. <laughs> I'm, I'm certain. I'm sure you could. Uh, so what does this mean for the average Duke Energy customer, Ryan? So for a residential customer in, in the upstate, uh, a Duke Energy Carolinas customer, the fuel charge decrease, which is what would take effect in November, would be almost 14% decrease. Uh, customers, our, our commercial customers and our industrial customers, um, they have different dynamics that affect the way that their pricing is, but that they would also see significant decreases if if these uh, if this proposal is approved by the regulator. Yep, Ryan Mosier with us today, communications manager with Duke Energy. Let's talk a minute about Duke Energy in general. My listeners know that my wife Peg and I have a home on Lake Kiwi. They hear me talking about uh, the Oconee nuclear plant, driving by there pretty much weekly. Um, talk about the areas that Duke Energy serves. So Duke Energy has been in South Carolina for more than 100 years. Uh, actually, we, we consider South Carolina the birthplace of Duke Energy. Uh, our first power plant was on the Catawba River up near Rock Hill. And the founders of the company saw an opportunity in those days in the early 20th century to help the textile industry, which was burgeoning in the southeast, become more efficient and, and create more jobs. And so that's where the whole electrification of the south began, and Duke Energy was one of those companies there at the forefront. So we expanded over the the course of the 20th century and went from hydropower to coal to gas to nuclear and um, have been at it ever since in South Carolina. Duke Energy uh, basically covers a territory, if you cut a line from, say, Anderson to Aner over in Ori County, everything north of that, uh, we have customers in those counties over two utilities, Duke Energy Carolinas, which serves mostly the upstate and is the former Duke Power footprint from years ago. Yeah. And then some years ago, we merged with another uh, company called Progress Energy, which is more on the eastern side of the Carolinas. And so Duke Energy Progress uh, is a, has a footprint there in the Florence, Starlington, Sumter area. Yeah. 
And, and let me say this, Ryan, too, as someone who's been involved in the upstate community for many years, uh, Duke Energy is a wonderful corporate citizen as well. You support local nonprofits. The uh, the Duke Energy Foundation is amazing. For 40 years now, uh, you've, you've distributed over five hundred million dollars to over twenty thousand nonprofits. Uh, that's pretty impressive, and and I'll, I say thank you for what you guys do in our communities. Well, I appreciate that. The foundation is such a fantastic organization that we use to do a lot of great work across uh, South Carolina and across all of the areas where the company operates. In South Carolina, that's millions of dollars a year going to organizations that do all kinds of stuff. You know, one of the things, it's a signature campaign that we created a few years ago that the foundation leads for us in South Carolina, really fights food insecurity. Uh, we, yeah. we discovered as a result of the pandemic, we were looking around to seeing where, where can we best spend this money? What, where are the challenges right now? And, and we did a lot of research and found that food insecurity continues to be just a really nasty problem for folks across South Carolina. And so we spend the entire month of November finding opportunities to give to organizations, to highlight organizations, to boost events that help in that area. And we, we look forward to an even a, a better expanded campaign coming up where we partner with organizations like Mill Village Farms and uh, Food Share South Carolina and uh, Harvest Hope and, and so many smaller organizations uh, across the upstate and across South Carolina. They're too numerous to, to, yeah. to name, but that's like a $500,000 campaign every year. Wow. Well, th- and that's something uh, w- I'd love for you to come back one day and let's talk more about that as we uh, get into the fall for sure. Ryan Moser, Communications Manager with Duke Energy, thank you for your time today. And as I said, thank thank you to Duke Energy for the uh, good corporate citizen that you're on. I look forward to future conversations. I look forward to the call. Thank you so much. Sure thing. Thank you, sir. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, you're totally remodeling the kitchen. When it's time to get those new appliances, when you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 11,000 square feet and 1,500 appliances at any any given time, you can buy today and use today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse in Pickens. It's worth the short drive over to Pickens. Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team over there, they'll take good care of you. They have an award-winning service department, expert installation, extended warranties, and at Discounted Appliance Warehouse, They treat you like family. You're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they're proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor. You owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance to head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. Hope you'll join the conversation today, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro is one of the front runners to be Vice President Kamala Harris's running mate. And evidently, according to reports, has canceled three appearances coming up this weekend, fundraising events in the Hamptons which, of course, is is a cluster of wealthy New York towns. Now, the cancellations came just days before Harris is expected to announce her running mate at a Philadelphia rally on Tuesday. A lot of speculation has gone into why these trips were canceled. Uh, Manuel Bonder, a spokesperson for Shapiro, told the New York Times the governor's trip was planned several weeks ago and included several fundraisers for his own campaign committee. His schedule has changed, and he no longer is traveling to the Hamptons this weekend. One of the events was a summer soiree to be held for the Next 50, which is a liberal youth advocacy organization where Shapiro, who's 51 years old, was marketed as a special guest, according to the New York Times. Shapiro's potential VP candidacy has come under scrutiny. The National Women's Defense League is urging Vice President Kamala Harris to think twice about choosing Shapiro because of how he handled a sexual harassment case in his office involving former Cabinet Secretary Mike Vareb. 
NWDL Director Emma Davidson Tribbs said in a statement, Governor Shapiro's office should have done a better job preventing sexual harassment happening in his own office for former Cabinet Secretary Mike Verrepp, including protecting the survivor who bravely came forward, ensuring that any other potential survivors felt safe in speaking up, and ensuring the harasser didn't have the opportunity to do further harm after the complaint. Uh, Tribbs added, as the Harris campaign and the Democrat Party consider their options for vice presidential candidates, we urge them to consider the handling of past complaints of sexual harassment inside the Pennsylvania governor's office. The American people deserve to know that if called to a higher office, Governor Shapiro will do more to ensure the safety and dignity of employees, volunteers, and constituents in his office. Verib stepped down in September 2023 after Shapiro's administration quietly agreed to pay $295,000 to settle claims from a governor's office employee who said that Verib made unwanted sexual advances toward her and spoke openly about her, other staff members, and a female state senator, according to the Philadelphia Inquirer. Bonder told Fox News in a statement, although the Commonwealth does not comment on specific personnel matters, It takes allegations of discrimination and harassment seriously. They talked about how the, they, uh, their robust uh, procedures are in place to thoroughly investigate such reports. Meanwhile, uh, voters believe that vice president Kamala Harris knew about covered up president Biden's reported cognitive health issues. That's according to a YouGov times of London poll that surveyed 1,170 registered voters on July 22nd and July 23rd. Among those who believe Biden's health issues were kept under wraps, 92% said they think the vice president was well aware of the situation. Overall, 68% of respondents believe that Biden's decline was on uh, Harris's radar and that the vice president just overlooked it, didn't bring it up. Jonathan Alpert is a psychotherapist and author based in New York City. He said, there's no way for me to know what went through Kamala's head or what her experience has been dealing with Joe Biden. Many voters, of course, believe that that, uh, the vice president knew what the president was doing. Uh, Alpert said, and, and, and by the way, he has not treated Biden. He said, perhaps seeing him on a regular basis made it difficult for her to pick up on any changes. Of course, this is just speculation and we do not know any of the formal diagnosis. Judy Gaiman, CEO of Executive Medicine of Texas, a luxury medical services provider in South Lake, Texas, previously spoke with Fox News Digital about the failure of those around Biden to seek help for the president. Gaiman said, either they are in denial or have watched this take place over a period of time, so they're less sensitive to the contrast, or they're fully aware but can't bear the thought of what happens to the family on many levels if Joe is no longer president. Uh, Now, look, this idea that maybe this happened over a period of time and because Kamala Harris was so close to him, or anybody for that matter, was so close to the president that they just weren't aware of the changes, that's nonsense. No way that could happen. No way. You had to know if you're spending any look, spending more time with Joe Biden should have made her more aware that something was badly wrong with the president. Uh, Miss Gaiman said either way, they're in denial and have watched this take place over a period of time. So they're less sensitive to the contrast, but they're fully aware and can't bear the thought. Well, you know, that that's, that's not a reason. Um, although there's been a long debate about potential signs of cognitive decline, and we've watched it as a nation. The issue came up to the forefront, of course, during the presidential debate. And again, I'm going to stick to my theory that someone very close to Joe Biden, someone in the inner circle, and maybe this is someone with close ties to the to the vice president, they, they set Joe Biden up. They knew Joe Biden could not survive a debate And that's why they pushed him to challenge Donald Trump the way he did, because that was totally out of characteristic, uncharacteristic of how Joe Biden has typically 
responded to the idea of debating John, Donald Trump. They played to Joe Biden's pride, his uh, tough, tough guy attitude, and convinced him to challenge Donald Trump, knowing that he would fail miserably, knowing that he would be forced out, knowing that this was their way of showing the world what they already knew about Joe Biden. The question is, how much did Kamala Harris know about this? And was Kamala Harris involved in this? The president, as you remember, appeared to freeze on stage. And and this wasn't the first time. I mean, think about all the the gaffes, as, as they were called at the time, of Joe Biden shaking hands in the air. No one was there. Of Joe Biden getting confused on just how to simply exit a stage. Of Joe Biden not being able to complete sentences, not being able to pronounce names. Not knowing about his surroundings. Those are clear signs of someone who has dementia. I saw it in my grandmother. You've probably seen it in people close to you as well. And you can't just ignore it like they did. Uh, uh, Especially if it's the leader of the free world. If it's a guy who has his, his thumb on the nuclear button. If it's the guy who could be awoken at 5 a.m. in the morning to make a tough decision. A new survey found that among those who believe any potential issues with Joe Biden's health uh, have been kept quiet, uh, they're not buying it. American people aren't buying it. Uh, Let's do a little quick history here. Uh, In mid-July, Biden, of course, tested positive for COVID-19, was said to experience upper respiratory symptoms that included a runny nose, uh, a non-productive cough, with uh, General Malice. On July 23rd, Dr. Kevin O'Connor, the president's personal physician, released a letter stating that Biden's symptoms had resolved and he would continue to be monitored for any re- reoccurrence of the, of the virus. 68% of poll respondents believe Biden's decline was on Harris's radar. White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre has stated that Biden has seen a neurologist multiple times as part of routine health exams, but that he's not being treated for any neurological disorders. Now, let me ask you this. I I get a physical every year. I don't go to a neurologist. Is this routine for you? Those of you who, like me, maybe are getting on up there in in age, do you see a neurologist for any reason? No way are we buying the idea that Joe Biden saw this neurologist, what was it, like three times? And it wasn't because they suspected cognitive decline? They're all in denial. The whole family's in denial. Or they just think we're so stupid that that they can pull this over us. That they can keep Joe Biden in power because They can't stand the thought of Joe Biden not being in the White House. Now, again, wouldn't you love to know what role Kamala Harris played in pushing him to be involved in that debate, knowing how he would perform? In some cases, uh, Dr. Albert noted signs may be genuinely missed, uh, saying, generally speaking, family members who see their loved one on a regular basis don't always pick up on the cognitive decline as perceptively as those who might just see someone on occasion. For example, someone seeing grandma once a year during the holiday season is more likely to pick up on a decline than if they were seeing her monthly. If family members and close associates are in denial about a loved one's cognitive decline, it can delay diagnosis and treatment. I'm not buying this is what happened. The whole world could see Joe Biden, and we we were predicting this for months. For months. We knew something was wrong. No way the Biden family and those close around Biden in the inner circle didn't know this either. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford tax line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here 
in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you can you could trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, either way, if you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single tra- transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman. They do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done. And you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at Furman Ford. doesn't even have to be a Ford. They, they service all makes and models. Visit my friends at Furman Ford online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. Faye writes, well, Joey, seems I heard fake news. Trump apparently was on target about cackles. No, she is not a moderate anything and has not received a single vote, even for dog catcher. Dom writes, good day, Joey. Referring to the question of whether Harris is black or Indian, she, like all Democrats, is a chameleon. They completely change to whichever brings the most power. Just so you know, I label myself as Martian. Be well, my friend. (laughs) And Nanu, Nanu. (laughs) You know, the whole idea that Trump has called Kamala out on the race issue, whether she's Indian or whether she's black, he posted on True Social yesterday a photo of Kamala with her her mother and other family members with her Indian, I think it's called a sari, uh, the, the, it's sort of a, a, a sash type thing that you wear over your shoulder, uh, very common in the Indian culture. This photo shows her with her family, with this Indian garment on. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. You should be proud of your heritage. What's wrong with it is the idea that back when Kamala Harris was running for the U.S. Senate, she made a big deal out of the fact that she would be the first female uh, Indian to be elected as a U.S. senator from California. And what Donald Trump said, and everybody else is probably thinking, was then Joe Biden comes along. He needs a female, and preferably a black female, to be his vice presidential vice presidential running mate. Well, guess who's, who's a black female suddenly? Kamala Harris. Is calling this out, is, is, is talking about her race, whether it be Indian, black, white, whatever. Is that fair game? Or did Donald Trump overstep a bound? Several news outlets yesterday called him out on it and quoted other Republican elected officials as saying he did cross that line, showing that he, he, uh, that they're distancing themselves from Donald Trump on this issue. And the other question that one can ask is, did he have to bring it up, particularly in front of the group that he did? Uh, Is this one of those instances where, and some of you have emailed me and text me, that you would rather Donald Trump not bring these things up in this election year? But, But try to talk about her policy, try to talk about her failures as an elected official? Jordan writes on the text line, Israel has every right to strike who attacks first. We are persecuted on every end of the globe for just existing. I work in a small collision repair shop in Greenwood. We have the best melting pot you can imagine. Puerto Rican, Mexican, white, Egyptian, Israeli, all different faiths, Jehovah, Jewish, Muslim, Catholic, and Christian. And we're all sick of the violence. I wish the world would come together like our little shop. One day, hopefully, the world will be at peace. And and Jordan, I think you're proving that you can do it, that it can be done, that people from all uh, faith backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, all people from from different races can get together, can get along. And I agree, Jordan. I, I long for those days as well. I'd love to come by and see you sometime. The next time I'm in Greenwood, you need to uh, text me, Jordan, and let me know where you are. 
Susan says, when you're filling in for Mike Gallagher, your caller Mike really hit the nail on the head. Biden and Harris are pandering to the radical Hamas sympathizers in Detroit, <laughs> Detroitistan and Dearbornistan. Dearborn a stand <laughs> with their 9-11 plea deal. I hope it calls Kakala a bunch of votes in New York and New Jersey where a lot of the victims live. This, of course, in response to the uh, to the plea deal that was just unbelievable. Unbelievable that these uh, the, the this these terrorists, the three terrorists who are responsible for the 9-11 that they're being given a plea deal to life in prison rather than a death sentence. They should be put to death immediately in the public square for what they did, for the for the chaos and for the loss of life they caused. I had a lot of comments on this uh, text messages, emails yesterday. This should never happen. And this is just uh, an example of the Biden-Harris administration not caring. They're, they've gone so far left that they're trying to pander to the left. And they're allowing these terrorists to live. And we're going to pay for their housing. We're going to pay for their food. We're going to pay for their health care for the rest of their lives. I saw one estimate that it would cost us $12 million to keep these three terrorists who took the lives of almost 3,000 Americans. That's that's on the day. That's on uh, 9-11, that doesn't account for those who, like the law enforcement first responders, who have taken their own life, who have committed suicide because of the atrocities they saw on that day, doesn't take into account those who have been sick with cancer and other diseases because of the exposure they received when they rushed into those buildings and tried to tried to rescue people, doesn't count into a, to, uh, to affect the, the pain, the suffering of those kids whose mom and dad went into work that day, never came home. They've had to live their life. They've had to grow up without a mom and a dad. And now we're going soft on these, on these terrorists. You're right, Susan. Um, I, I hope it costs them a bunch of votes in New York and New Jersey as well. Texter uh, Jennifer says, lots to talk about. <laughs> That's for sure, Jennifer. But this business of men and women's sports was seen around the world Thursday in Paris when Italian Olympian Angela Carini suddenly quit in the boxing ring in less than a minute. Yeah, we talked about that, uh, Jennifer. Uh, she said that she had been taken to the hardest punch and that she had ever felt from her opponent, Algerian Iman Khalif, who failed a gender eligibility test last year and was disqualified from the 2023 competition. What a horrible but but victorious moment for Karini. She lost the bout but won yet another battle for women as she took a stand for getting men out of women's sports. I hope all women will band together and continue to refuse to compete against males who identify as female. The question for so many things happening in America today, how did we lose our common sense? Good question. Good question, Jennifer. And, and you know, that is a good way to look at that. This young lady if she and others like Riley Gaines and, and others will stand up for women's sports, they can get it back. They can win the battle. It may seem tough at times, but they can do it. They can be strong. New information on the attempted assassination of President Trump. A whistleblower told Republican Missouri Senator Josh Hawley that acting Secret Service Director Ronald Rowe Jr. Personally directed cuts to the counter uh, surveillance division, known as CSD, which led to the threat assessment team failing to perform its typical duties prior to the Butler, Pennsylvania rally. And this would be consistent with the reports from the uh, the local or the or the uh, the county, the Beaver County SWAT team, who claimed that they were never briefed by the Secret Service as promised. Uh, the senator's report comes after lawmakers grilled the agency this week on mounting security failures at the Pennsylvania rally. Uh, the whistleblower alleged that the Secret Service, CSD, the division that performs threat assessment of event sites before the event occurs, did not perform its evaluation prior to the fateful rally in Pennsylvania on July 13th. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. 
visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of Just the Truth to some friends. Just click on the share button. Send it to a few of your contacts because if we're going to build our community and if we're going to win in November, we got to build an army of conservatives. The way we beat Joe Biden is through educating people and no better way than encouraging them to listen to just the truth. Hey, keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your emails always welcome as well. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Don't forget to take advantage of the My Pillow special, $25 for the My Towels six-piece towel set when you use promo code Joey. Just go to mypillow.com. Always use promo code Joey. We're back again tomorrow. Hope you will be too. Remember, God's got this. He's still in control. <laughs>